Hold on a second. By way of explanation, we've been here before. Another couple settled onto this window ledge a while back. My wife and I watched in fascination from our bedroom as Mom and Dad built their nest. Laughing doves. Pretty birds. Pinker than the more familiar morning dove. Anyway, we were looking forward to seeing the chicks hatch, hearing them chirp and coo until they were old enough to fly off. But then, poof. And that's okay. I don't assume they'll stay, but I'm pleased to watch this new couple working away on this lovely May morning. Mother's Day is tomorrow, and it will be the first without my mom, who left us in January. I'm up early, trying hard to be quiet, because Judith is a dedicated sleeper. I wanted to check out the doves. I spent an hour watching for them, but they're nowhere to be seen. I could be checking out other neighborhoods also. That might be their regular process. They make it to see if it's a sustainable place. We know that this is a dangerous ledge. The previous nest fell off. She's not always so unflappable, but in general, she doesn't sweat the small stuff like I do. Once she's dressed, lo and behold, I thought they were gone. That they hadn't liked me staring at them. That the ledge was too narrow. That the neighborhood wasn't good enough. But. They are back, for now. And well, it's almost like waiting for grandchildren. Our street, our corner. Judith said doves like millet, but the market where we usually shop didn't have any. So I'm on a mission. Meanwhile, I see people building homes and perched on ledges all along the way. big outdoor market, I see a familiar sight. Someone who doesn't have a home. Finding the millet in an organic food store, I return to our neighborhood, our street, our apartment building, and bring the bird food upstairs. Here I am, putting out millet for the doves. Resigned to the fact that they won't be coming back, I answer nature's call. Meanwhile, the mother of my two children awakes and discovers, hmm, wouldn't you know it? There's a dove outside our window. Judith deserves full credit, of course, but we both know that eating our millet does not guarantee the bird has come to stay. Even so, we're both pleased to see the young couple enjoy the breakfast, and we're hopeful about tomorrow. They spent the night somewhere else, but the doves are back for the second morning in a row. Judith, like me, is wary of forming any attachment. No, it's been good to learn about how these birds nest, the flimsiness of their nest, where they like to nest in little crevices, um, and how the, they build the nest together, and the man brings the... Twigs. Twigs, and the woman fits them in. That's been pretty cool.
just going to feed them while we're gone. We're going to be gone for a couple of days. What can they do? They fed themselves before we ever showed up. What happens if the eggs are laid during the time? Judith's getting ahead of herself, of course. We don't even know if the birds are back for good. The birds inside our room, taking liberties with our own home after we had offered our ledge as this wonderful place for their refuge. Now, I kind of like that idea. They felt so comfortable that they came on the inside. Inside and outside are now converging liminal space. Liminal space. Once a professor, always a professor. I'm thinking maybe we should put a little millet inside the room now, but we've got to leave more windows open so that the bird can get out. Whoa. Millet inside our bedroom? I didn't even endorse seating the ledge by her bureau before we went away for the night. Now, on the other hand, this might have scared them away for good. It's been six days since we saw the female nesting. So we've given up on the idea of welcoming a baby dove to our bathroom window ledge. The couple still likes to stop by for our millet, but watching them eat has gotten monotonous. I'd rather sit out on our front porch and watch the other neighbors. I'm no ornithologist, so I can't easily tell a wren from a sparrow. I don't venture out on finch expeditions. I'm more of an opportunistic bird watcher. I enjoy observing what flies by. both of them on the ledge and then I see the lady turn around go over and sit next thing I see he flies off he comes back he brings them a twig I think they're really 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 back I'd, I'd like to film them from the bedroom I think that we're at a very delicate moment here they really need to settle in they're choosing between several different sites still they're starting to see the advantages of this site they're rebuilding the nest but I don't want to scare them away Wait a second. You just said they're back. If they're really, 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 really back, that means I should be able to film them through the bedroom. Switch those when I said this. put this one first and put the other one later. When you edit. The magic don't tell me edit. how to edit on camera. Don't tell me how to talk on camera. <laughs> Story of my life. Even when I'm producer, director, and editor, Judith tells me what to do. But we're moving on. Okay, now this is new. The first time Mama Dove has settled down on our ledge for the evening. I say Mama Dove because the internet told us the female sits through the night and the male takes over for the day. So yes, this could really be it. I think that we're gonna have some little chicks. I'm really excited. Lisa, I wanted to say. I, you invited me over for dinner. Don't make this part of the thing. Everything is part of the bargain. Stop filming. Our daughter obviously doesn't share our enthusiasm for documentary filmmaking. I'm not even sure she cares about the doves. Which brings me back to mom for her first sleepover, knowing that an egg is coming. It's now only a matter of when. As usual, I'm up early, and Judith isn't. Mama Dove is still there. We read that it might take two weeks for an egg and another two weeks of chick rearing before the little ones fly off. So we could be in for a long stretch of dove watching. Hey, an egg so soon, Judith.
This morning, I hope to see Dad take over the nest for the day shift. Problem is, he may have already done it, because we don't know when the dove's day begins. I thought I could tell them apart from this earlier footage. The dove in the foreground, the male I thought, has a smoother looking head with a bit more pink and orange. But now I think those differences are only a matter of the light's angle. Here is our morning nest sitter from one angle, and then another. One angle, and then another. See what I mean? Male and female doves are almost identical. So, just in case I haven't missed it, I leave the camera running and go back and forth from my exercise mat to the window. Eventually, Judith gets up and starts her day. She's making us coffee when I hear the flutter of wings from above. And just like that... It's been three weeks since the egg snatching incident. The doves came back within a day, but only to eat the millet we set out on the ledge. Mama Dove shows no sign of returning to her nest. I admit I overreacted a bit to what happened. The blue jay was merely answering the call of the wild. But to me, there was a lot of symbolism in all of it. In the egg, I saw the grandchild I hoped to have one day. In the dove, I saw my mom who died last winter. And why didn't I try to save the unborn chick? See what I mean? Anyway, in the great scheme of things, there was no tragedy. On the contrary, I'm a lucky guy to have had the opportunity to watch the story unfold. So this ends in this park with the crows, the pigeons, the doves, the blue jays, and the minor birds. I remember my Uncle Babe had a minor bird years ago. He taught it to say a few choice phrases like, Birds can't talk, and Where's Amy? Where's Karen? And Uncle Babe, well, he's where my mom and the dove egg are. Meanwhile, life goes on. <laughs>